Hello everyone and welcome back. Uh, my name is Ali Sharifara and this video is part of the introduction in programming using Java series. In the last session we learned how to install an ID. As you may recall, we used IntelliJ IDEA for writing our program. And also we learned how to run our first Java application. Also, we briefly talk about package, class, and functions. And today I'm going to talk uh, more details about the basics in uh, our first program. Let's uh, have a closer look at the print statement that we have written the last session. So as you may recall, for each class we need to have a main function and the shortcut is we simply we can write main and then press enter. So it will uh, write this section of code for us and we don't need to be worried about that and in the main class we need to write our print function so what I need to do again I can use the shortcut s out and then press enter it will write the system.out.println for us we will see uh, in detail kind of things that can get printed uh, in the beginning the things we care about printing are numbers something like uh, 20 right so if you want to print a number we can simply write it between these uh, two parentheses here and also we can write a strings or we can say text something like uh, hello world <clears throat> but remember if you want to uh, print a string or text on the screen we need to uh, enclose it in double quotes right so here if I run this program we will see that in the uh, in the console hello world is printed but if we want to print uh, a number we don't have to use um, double quotes we simply we can write our number here for example number 10 it will uh, if I run this number 10 will be printed in the in the console so uh, what you want to print is called uh, an argument so let me write yeah so here whatever you write between these two parentheses is an argument um, so we write system.out.println and here we have an uh, argument in other words we can say that uh, we need to write system.outprintln followed by a left parenthesis. So let me write it here. Um, and then we need to write our uh, argument and followed by a right parenthesis. And don't forget to add the semicolon at the end of uh, println statement. Here, I can print something like um, sample text and I can execute this program and we will see that this text will be displayed in the console and um, if I want to uh, print a number I can simply write it here for example number 20. Um, this is uh, this is called an argument uh, in the argument here, we also can do some calculation. For example, if you want to add 20 plus number 10 and then uh, execute the program, we will see that the result will be number 30, right? So uh, we are also able to perform uh, any type of calculation in the println or print statement. But if I enclose this uh, argument with uh, double quotes the result is not number 30 the result will be exactly the same as this uh, string here so it will be 20 plus 10. Java consider this argument as a string and that's why it doesn't do any uh, calculation so it just prints uh, the argument that we have here let me uh, make some changes here. If I want to print hello here, the output will be hello. And if I remove the double quotes here, so as soon as I remove 
it uh, the ID changed the color to red. So we know that this is an incorrect statement, right? So here, if I try to execute this program, we will get an error. And this is the error cannot find symbol uh, hello, variable hello. I'll be talking about variable uh, in the upcoming sessions. Uh, but this is the problem. We need to enclose any string with double quotes. If we want to print um, a string in the console, we need to enclose it in double quotes. And also remember, uh, the semicolon is very important. Uh, otherwise, we are not able to execute our program. So if I try to run it, uh, by the way, there are some different ways to execute your program. You can uh, press this play uh, button here or you can use a play button here, run the uh, current program, or you can use uh, the play button here, but since we have an error, it doesn't show up. But let me try to run this program, and again, we get an error because the semicolon is missing at the end of this statement. All right, so everything is fine, so I'm able to run this. And we can see the uh, the result. Uh, and also the order of the uh, parentheses uh, and also the parentheses itself are important. If I try to remove parentheses, you can see we still uh, we get this uh, this red line here, which indicates that something is wrong with our program. We have to use parentheses if we want to uh, print. Right, so this is the syntax again system.out.println, left parentheses, the argument, and we have right parentheses and semicolons. We always need to follow that. It doesn't work, for example, if I want to move these to somewhere else, somewhere between here, it does not work. Again, we get an error. And if I want to move it, for example, before the parentheses here, again, we get an error. So the right place for putting an argument is between uh, parentheses. Uh, so as you can see, uh, the Java, it's like any uh, programming language, is very strict. If we don't follow the uh, syntax exactly, it will refuse to execute that line. Uh, this is true not only for system.out.println, but for any syntax rules that we will see in, in this course. As I just mentioned, we can use Java as a calculator. Um, if we want to uh, calculate something, uh, for example, if I want to see the result of 23 times, uh, for example, number three here, and if I uh, execute this program, we will see that in the console, we will see the result, so which is 69. And if I want to uh, add, for example, plus number one, we get number 70, right? Because the number 70 here is the result of this um, calculation, 23 times three plus one. And uh, we can type arbitrary numerical expressions and Java evaluates them. And uh, actually, this is not a uh, still is not that exciting. Uh, so, however, such calculation are a useful building block for real programs. Uh, we all we are we also can use uh, math calculations in our programs. For example, if I want to see uh, twenty three, the power of uh, three. So in that case, I can write math dot pow 23 power of 3, right? So if I execute this, we will get the result of this calculation. Or let me make a simple one, for example, 2 power of 3 which the expected result is eight, number eight. We also can get the square root by writing math.sqrt of a number, for example, number 
16. The result is number 4 because number 4 here is the square root of number 16. It works for any, uh, any number here. So if you want to uh, try any other numbers, uh, you still can do it. For example, number, uh, let's make it uh, 1600. We can uh, see the result is 40. Even we can do some more math calculation. Uh, there are a bunch of functions that we can use in the math. But remember, uh, we have added this part. Let me remove this between these two parentheses in print ln. So if I want to, uh, if I try, if I want to try more math calculations, first I need to write math dot. For example, uh, I want to try uh, pi. So we know that the uh, this is a pi number. So it's uh, three point uh, one four. So if you want to see the exact value, we can execute and this is the exact value for the pi number 3.1415 and so on. And similarly, if you want to uh, see the, uh, the, the sine or cosine or minimum or maximum, we still we can use. So basically, if you write math and then after that put uh, uh, dot we will see all the available functions that we can use for example we can get the absolute of a value uh, so don't worry about this uh, this uh, data types here we have integer line float double we will be talking about this type uh, these data types in the upcoming uh, videos but uh, here if uh, just you can try to uh, at least few of these functions. Uh, for example, if you want to get a max of um, the maximum between two numbers, for example, we have number 20 and number 30. So obviously here the maximum is 30, right? So I execute that and here we can see the, uh, the output here is 30. And also, we can use the minimum, so I change this to minimum, and the minimum in this example will be number 20. So feel free to uh, play around to add to uh, to um, to use some other functions here. Uh, for example, uh, sine of number 30. Yeah, so you can use uh, basically different functions here and it gets printed in the console. There are several uh, operators that we can use. For example, we can use asterisk or a star for multiplication. We can use plus if we want to, uh, uh, if you want to add one number to another, we can use minus. And uh, a slash here can be used for, uh, for division. Right, so we can use it for division. So it can be floating point division or integer division. Uh, let's have a closer look. Uh, by the way, here I have used uh, double slashes here or a slash a slash. If I write a slash a slash, the entire line will be ignored by Java. So Java uh, does not compile the rest of. Um, the rest of the line. This is just for writing some comments for your program. Uh, again, we will be talking about comments uh, in the upcoming sessions, but for now, um, we know that if we write a slash a slash, we are able to write some comments about our code and it doesn't um, compile uh, that line. All right, so let me remove this line for now. And what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to divide eight by two, right? So as I just mentioned, if we use a slash, we can use a division. So we can divide eight by two. Uh, and if I run this, number four gets printed. Um, yeah, basically we can use any, uh, any numbers here. Uh, just feel free to try this out. 
and again if you use a star here we can use it for multiplication 8 times 2 is 16 so number 16 is printed uh, for divisions let me add uh, one more point here um, so this is integer division uh, we know that 8 divided by 2 is number 4 we don't have any floating point but if I use for example number 9 9 divided by 2 we will see um, this is expected result this is number 4 because we have used integer division but we know that the exact result of this uh, calculation is 4.5 but since we didn't add any floating point here, the result is also doesn't have any floating point. But if I add, for example, 9.0, 2.0, then I run this program, we will see that the result is different this time. We have 4.5. So we can use slash, let me write this, for uh, integer and uh, floating point, floating point division. But remember, if you want to have floating point division, we need to include uh, floating point as well to the numbers. And if you want to have integer division, we don't have to add any floating point. So the result will be the integer division. The integer division of 9.9 uh, divided by 2 is 4. But the floating point division is 4.5. And also, uh, it's, uh, if we add just uh, floating point to one of the numbers, it's, it's just enough. We don't have to do for all of them. So let me copy this line. And I... Uh, for the first one, I'm going to add the floating point to the first one. To the second one, I'm going to add the floating point to the second. And in the last one, I'm going to add the floating point to both. The result of all these three uh, uh, print functions will be exactly the same. As you can see here, we will get 4.5, 4.5, and 4.5. And another point is for the remainder of a number. For example, if you want to know the remainder of uh, 9 divided by 2, so instead of uh, this operator here, we need to use the percent sign. Let me delete these two lines. So here, uh, if, if it prints the remainder of this calculation. If I run this, the remainder of these uh, two numbers is number one. Let me write this here one more time. We can use asterisk for uh, multiplication. We use uh, a slash for division. Either it can be integer or floating point division. We can use uh, percentage sign for getting the uh, remainder of two numbers. All right, we don't need this line. And we use minus plus uh, for uh, subtract subtracting or adding uh, two numbers. All right, so let's uh, use these operators that we have learned so far for writing our first program, our first real program. So what we are trying to write here, we want to write a program to compute the circumference and area of a circle. So first of all, what do the circumference and area of a circle depend on? So this is something that we need to think about before writing a web program. Let me delete this line. Uh, so first of all, uh, we need to know the, uh, the radius of, of the circle. And after that, 
based on the radius of the circle, we are able to compute the circumference and area of a circle. Uh, let me uh, write this as a comment here. So what we need to do, we want to, uh, we want to uh, compute the circumference and area of a circle. What we need to do, uh, what, what do we need as an input? Let me go to the next line. Uh, what we need, we need to have the radius, the radius of the circle. This is the only input that we need. And after that, we will be able to compute the circumference of a circle by this equation two times pi number times radius and also for the area of a circle we can use pi times radius squared all right so this is the uh, the information that we need before writing our program so the question here is we want to calculate the circumference and radius of a circle. We know that for this kind of this kind of calculation we need to have the radius. Right? So you can just pause the video and try to write this program in the print ln. And after that you can see my uh, my solution. All right, so uh, I hope you guys uh, have written this part of the code. So what we are trying to do first, we are trying to write the uh, the circumference of the circle. All right, so for that, I'm going to use S out and press enter. So it uh, gives me the print ln, and then I from this equation I have. Um, so I need to add number two times pi, right? So for pi, I can use this package math dot pi. Then I can uh, multiply the radius. Now let's assume that the, the radius that we want to calculate is uh, twenty point twenty three one. No, oh, it's a uppercase letter. All right. Uh, so yeah, that's it. So by writing this, we uh, we can see the the circumference of a circle with this radius. Let me run this program, and we can see the output is one twenty seven point one one five, etc. Right. Um, and for the next part, so that, that one uh, was for circumference. Uh, Let me put this comment top of this print ln. And for the next one, we want to calculate the area. Again, it's out. And the equation here is pi, which I use this package math pi times. The, uh, the radius power 2. I can use again math package and we need to use power radius which is 20.231 the power of 2. And we run that. Yeah, as you see here, uh, these two numbers. The first one is the circumference of the uh, the circle with this radius, and the second result, which is one two eight five point eight three etc., is the result for uh, the area 
of the circle. So you can use different numbers here. Instead of this number, you can uh, use uh, any other number as, as a radius. But the point here is the input for this kind of calculation is just the radius. We, we can change it to any, any other numbers. All right, so uh, yeah, we have uh, calculated circumference and area of a circle. But the question is, is this a good program to sell to a user? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, the only way for, for the user to use this program is to modify the code every time to specify the radius. For example, if, uh, if tomorrow we want to change this to a different number, for example, 22.2, uh, 22.345, I need to open my ID, I need to hard code it, I need to rewrite this number again, and then I can run this. So, yeah, this is the, the new result based on the new input for uh, 22.345, 22.345. So the answer is no. The only way for the user is to use this program is to modify the code every time to specify the radius. So this is bad. So users uh, shouldn't need to be programmers. And uh, also, uh, is there any other issues or problems with this program? Uh, so as you see here, the radius is uh, a specified uh, twice. So we have added the radius here and also we have added here. So let me remove the other lines that we don't need. Uh, yeah. S uh, and also we don't, again, we don't, uh, we don't need this, this line. It's just the comment. Uh, yeah, we also can get rid of these two lines. So all we have is these two lines or these two print ln functions. The first one is for the circumference and the second one is for the area. So the problem is first, uh, every time if you want to change the radius, we need to uh, modify this number. And the second problem is the radius is um, repeated twice. We have uh, added one time here and the second time we have added here. And this is actually a bad practice and it introduces the risk of errors. Um, and also more painful to change the radius, we must change it in two places. Yeah, so any other issues or any problems with this program? Um, we have mentioned two of them. And the third one is actually, it's, uh, the, the program is hard to read and it's hard to understand. If you show it to a programmer, it's clear what program is supposed to do. The output is just numbers, not very user-friendly output here. We can see that we have just two numbers here, 140, 1568, and it's not clear uh, what is actually happening uh, in this program. Uh, let's, let's modify some part of this program to make it better. So one improvement is we can introduce a variable. Yeah, in the, in the next session, uh, we are going to use variables and I'll also we are going to uh, make some improvement in this, in this program. We have seen that there are three potential problems here. The first one is um, we have to, uh, every time we need to hard code it, we need to write uh, any, any radius here. The second problem is if we have used it, actually we have used it twice here. One is for circumference and the other one is for the area. But what we are going to do is we don't want to repeat these numbers uh, two times. And the third problem is it's not clear uh, what is actually program is doing. Um, and uh, the reason is because in the output we have just numbers. It's not clear what is actually going on in this program. So in the next session, we are going to learn about variables. We are going to learn uh, more about different type of uh, 
print functions that we can use to make our output nicer and more user friendly. All right, uh, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next episode.